<clears throat> Y'all not gonna like me today. But it's alright. I'm gonna tell you the truth. For the past couple of days, I have been crying. And I've been crying not because there's, you know, something crazy going on or wrong. Because it's not. But I was crying because God gave me something so revelation to me. I'm going to say it. And I don't care who like it. A couple of weeks ago, my husband and I were in the bed. And we were watching Joel Osteen. And Joel Osteen said that he had a disagreement with his wife. And the son wanted to go bike riding. And when his son wanted to go bike riding, what he did is he got his son's bike. And as him and his son and his wife began to ride their bikes, because him and Victoria got into a slight disagreement, he got on the bike with an attitude. And when he got on the bike with the attitude, he began to ride his bike. And he began to look back at his son and said, come on, hurry up, hurry up. And his son was a little guy and he was paddling along. And as he was paddling along, he couldn't keep up. And so Joe Osteen said, come on. And when he said that, another cyclist came out and boom, hit his son. And the bike went flying in the air. His son helmet flew off and he ran and he said, oh, son, are you okay? And thank God his son was okay. But he said, if I had not opened the door to strife, this never would have happened. And as I began to sit there with Calvin, the Lord began to speak to me. And he said, now it's time for the lesson. And so as I began to sit down with the lesson that God gave me, he took this lesson from the time I sat with my husband until now. And now I am actually getting revelation knowledge and I couldn't wait to share it with you. I get so many phone calls as to why God is not hearing me. I get so many phone calls as to people saying, what am I doing wrong that God is not hearing my prayer? I get so many phone calls with people with thousands and thousands of complaints. And then God began to speak to me and he said, I want you to tell them what is going on. And I said, okay. And so he said, I want you to study the word strife. And I said, okay. And I begin to study the word strife. Now, all of you have cell phones, whether you have an iPhone or not. I want you to take that smartphone and use it for not so smart people at times. And I want you to put it to your phone, put the phone to your mouth and say, what is the definition of strife? And once you get the definition of strife, it's going to tell you this. Strife is a fundamental, it's anger and bitterness in a fundamental issue. It's bickering, it's fighting, it's back and forth. And strife is so dangerous until people don't realize how dangerous it really is. It's a blessing blocker. Now watch this. The same week I got to Jersey and I went to go get me a sandwich from Seton Hall because I was hungry. So I went into the store and the man was behind the counter and he was serving another gentleman. But the gentleman was saying, are you okay, man? He was like, yeah, I'm fine. What do you want? And he said, you know, can I have some plates? Can I have some napkins? And he said, you know, you're asking for all of this stuff. He said, what do you want? I said, well, sir, I just want a turkey sandwich. And he said, what do you want? And I said, onions, black olives. So I began to tell this man what I wanted on my sandwich. And he began to throw the sandwich together. And he was just arguing, throwing the sandwich together. And then he said, here, oh, I forgot your black olives. He pulled the refrigerator open. He took the black olives. He threw them on the sandwich. He wrapped the sandwich up and here. And I could not even eat the sandwich because it was nasty. And God said, he prepared your sandwich with strife. Watch this. So as I begin to get in my car, the Lord began to say, people are not receiving the blessings of God that make you rich and add no sorrow because they live daily with strife. And they don't understand how dangerous strife is. Strife gets in the community. And he said, now watch. He said, in the black community, everybody is fighting. Not everybody, per se. But the majority of the black community, there is strife. There is strife in the music. It's strife of the struggle. It's strife with everything. And so if the blessings of God prevails in an area where strife is not present, 
How does the blessings of God reach us if we're walking around angry and bitter? How does the blessings of God reach our community if our music is strifeful? If we're fighting about everything that makes no sense, how does God meet us? Now watch this. You go in certain communities and they're laughing and they're playing and they're juvenile and the kids are riding bikes and the brooks and the ducks and everything is very happy. And so I begin to have this conversation with my daughter and she says, mommy, maybe in the black community, maybe because they're so angry because they don't have. Watch this. As I begin to get this lessons from God, he said, then how do you bless the Lord at all times if you just only bless me when things are great? He said, because when strife is in you, you cannot bless the Lord at all times. And so if you can't bless me at all times and the praises aren't continuously being in your mouth, where strife is, I can't get to you. Because what you're doing is you are blocking the blessings of God. In our community, we fighting in the church. We fighting over chicken sandwiches, barbecue sandwiches, or fried chicken for the past to study. And so strife is now crept in in the church. So now when the praise and worship team gets up to sing, nobody's getting delivered. The yokes of bondage is not broken. And so in the church, the pastor's getting up in the pulpit, and I know I'm going to get trouble for this, but that's all right. And he's telling you, if you don't pay your tithes, God going to curse you. That's why your house is not blessed. And what he is doing, instead of allowing you to develop a relationship with Christ, he's telling you that you're going to hell because you can't pay your tithes and offering. And guess what you do? Cain and Abel creeps in. And the story with Cain and Abel is Cain gave an offering, Abel gave an offering. And Abel just said, here, take it. And so the sacrifice was not given. And there was no love in his offering. And it was strife. And so when Abel gave it his strife, boom, he looked at Cain and he got angry because God found favor because Cain gave it from heart, his heart and love. And so when you have strife, God can't bless you. I'm going to teach you this. I'm telling you all, this thing is deep. Genesis 13 and 7. Abraham was getting ready to get blessed. But the contingency was you have to avoid strife. So. Psalms 106 and 32, Moses, now watch this man, he goes into the promised land and he gathers all the children of Israel and God said that I'm going to prepare a place for you and Moses could not even go into the promised land, watch this, because he was in the middle of people who was dealing with strife and he got angry, boom, and he hit a rock and God said because of your anger you can't even make it to the promised land. You do not understand how strife keeps you from the blessings of God. Strife is a horrible thing. The Bible said that he blesses the cheerful giver. And so if you're in a church and they're telling you, you better pay your tithes and offering, never mind about your rent. You better pay your tithes and offering. And you say, all right, here, take it. And then you come to church. You miss it. God said he blesses the cheerful giver. How do you become a cheerful giver in a church and the pastor is telling you how much you're going to hell because you can't do this and you can't do that. If you don't have your tithes and offering, I'm going to say this and I know I'm going to get hate mail for it, but who cares? Get up an extra hour early and get to church on time and clean the church. Hold somebody's baby. Prepare a meal for somebody sick in your church because tithing and offering is not always monetary. And so how do you be a cheerful giver if you barely don't have two dimes to run together? But if you get to a place where you said, I'm not going to complain about it. I will bless the Lord at all time and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth. How do you get a continuous praise if strife kept them? And I'm going to show you the dangerous thing and I'm going to get out of here. Strife is so dangerous because you'll get so angry and so you'll shut your mouth and you won't praise God. You will shut your mouth and you'll complain and you'll get bickery and you'll get angry until you will not hear the voice of God. His son died on the cross. Those of you that believe he was stretched high. He was pulled out wide. And God couldn't look on his son because he had taken on the sin of the world and he took on strife. And so if you're in a community, if you're in an area and everybody is angry, everybody is hollering, everybody is screaming, how do you bless the Lord at all times? And so God said the reason why people are not getting blessed because they're complaining. They're fighting about stupidity. They're bitter. Instead of blessing me all times that means be very quiet and just say thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah thank you Jesus I'm not gonna complain about it hallelujah and so when you do that you are allowing God to hear you and your voice can be heard so quickly than it is 
You don't understand how strife is such a horrible thing. I'm going to say this, and I don't care how viral it goes. I'm not here for that. I'm here to deliver God's word, and we are not like when we're telling the truth. Donald Trump is a very strifeful man. Watch this. When he goes and he has his, 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 his meetings, I'm going to call them meetings, and he gets up before the mic, and he's spewing out strife, he is the only presidential candidate that we can really give credit to that when he opens his mouth, chaos breaks out. You have the looting, the rioting outside and people are angry because he gets up on the podium and he spews strife. And so therefore those that follow him, they are members of strife because you only are what your leader is. But Barack Obama could stand up and he could say something. And not one time that I know of that CNN report that there was a riot outside of what he said. Because the Bible says that he blesses the peacemaker. Watch this. In our community, we are told, if you don't open up, you're considered weak. If you don't fight back, you're considered a punk. If these men don't fight back, they're considered weak. Instead of a man saying, I don't want to fight today. It's okay. The Bible says that a grief will have a It also says that he blesses the peacemaker. Watch this. So if there's always violence in the community, how does he bless the peacemaker? If there's strife in the community, how does he bless the peacemaker? I'm coming to you. In the household, if your husband is slamming doors, fighting, screaming, fussing about everything, fussing about the kids, yelling about that, fussing about the dog, how does the blessing of God reach your household? Because he blesses the peacemaker. When your husband, the head of the household, opens that door and strife gets in your household, how does God operate in a strifeful environment? If your wife is angry and now you're dwelling on the rooftop because strife has crept in the marriage. Strife has crept in to the church. It's crept in everywhere. And so the enemy is very happy because once, you, once strife comes in, he comes in and he could, you know what? He could dwell in it. He could dwell in it. He loves strife. And that's why God says avoid it at all times. So you know what I do now? Okay. No problem. No, sir, you had. Oh, I practiced that thing today. I was driving. Apparently I came too close to a girl and she stuck her middle finger at me. And I said, God bless you. I'm sorry. Even though I was wrong, I said, I'm sorry. And she bowed her head. She says, I'm sorry too. Ahead. You go. Agree with your adversaries quickly. I don't want to fight. Everybody fighting in my community. Everybody fighting. They fighting, 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 fight. They just fighting. And they're putting strife in these communities. And that's why the property value has decreased. Because we have put strife in everything that we do. But you go to certain communities, oh, because you know they got money. No, the Bible says at all, all times, that means we got it when you don't got it. And so so when you bless the Lord at all times, that creates an atmosphere for him to dwell in. And if you are strengthful, you do not create an environment for God to come and say, I bless you. Now it's different when you're hurting and you're going through something in prayer. Lord Jesus, help me. I'll say this. The children of Israel, how do you walk across a Red Sea and you see an army in the back of you and Pharaoh in the back of you? And you get to a Red Sea with no boat and no way to get across. And you see it open up. And it did not say moist. It said dry. And you walk across dry. And your clothes don't even wilter. And food comes out of the sky. And you see all of this. And you get to your place and you begin to murmur and complain. Why? Because they allowed strife to creep in. Instead of saying, God, I thank you for your deliverance. God, thank you for your glory. God, I thank you, Lord God. It's going to be okay. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. And I said, okay, God, well, okay, give me a quick lesson for these people. He said, when they feel like they're overwhelmed and they're burdened and they can't make it, tell them I said, go outside. And I said, all right, God, okay, fine. And as I began to go driving, the Lord said that to me, I had a man come up to me with no legs and he asked me for money. And then I went a couple steps further and then I saw a lady whose body was contorted. And then I went another step further and my phone rang and somebody said, come to the hospital. My sister dying of AIDS. And then I could go a little bit further and I saw a man with his head down, homeless, sitting by a bank, wondering where was his last meal. And he said, every time they think they want to get 
crazy and discredit me when I don't move quickly up for them. Tell them I said go outside. Tell them to turn on the news because if you will bless the Lord at all times and his praises continuously be in your mouth, that breaks strife. The enemy can't dwell and God says, what you need, my child? Get in a place where you study strife. And once you study strife, cut that sucker out of your life. And I can guarantee you God will move. We get to a place where God is going to bless us. And he's saying, okay, right now, and you get angry and said, it's not happening fast enough. And God says, you're allowing strife to come in. Because with strife, guess what? It shoots your patience down. And patience is part of love. And so when strife comes in, God, I'm tired. You blessing everybody and you ain't blessing me. And I'm tired. And God, and, 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 and you begin to, like the children of Israel, they complained for 400 years over a trip that would have took them a good five days. Why? Because they allowed strife to come in. And it's all about your attitude. And that's where your altitude goes. People call me, oh, my car got me possessed. And my car is going. And I, okay, but baby, guess what? Lord, I thank you, Lord God. I'm going to get that car back. I'm going to take the bus and I'm going to get a ride for friends until you allow me to get another car. Thank God I got my feet. And so we allow strife to come in our life. And God's saying, guess what? Riri, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to stop what I'm saying. I'm proud of you, baby. You keep doing what you were doing. Don't let people talk you out of God's deliverance because it's working up for your good. You're going to have a mighty testimony. You are going to tell people that God delivered you and you don't let strife creep in. Don't let strife disrupt nothing God's trying to do. God's got a blessing with your name on it and you can't get to it because you're living in strife. You're angry. You're frustrated. You're complaining. You're looking at what everybody else got. Instead of saying, God, I thank you for this little house. God, I thank you. Your husband, you're mad, you're angry, you're frustrated. Instead of saying, baby, get the kids, get the dog. We're going to pray. We don't got a lot, but we're going to thank God until we get it. The blessings of God will make you rich and add no sorrow. But if sorrow is already in you, how do you receive the blessings of God? And that's what's wrong with us as a people. That's what's wrong with this whole world. Strife has crept in. And if you study that thing, get on your phone and say, give me the definition of strife. Where strife is, if you let it dwell, it opens up a doorway. And in this doorway, the presence of the most stupidest person alive, the enemy, dwells there. And that's why you need to detoxify yourself of strife. Practice it. Take 21 days and thank God without one complaint. Take 21 days and look at your environment and begin to thank God for the things that be not that they were, that they are coming to pass. Take 21 days and don't complain. If somebody in your family want to fight, you greet them with love. Hey, baby, how you doing? Take 21 days and practice nothing but the love of God and knock strife out of your life. In 21 days, that yoke of bondage will be broken. I'm going to say this and I'm going to get out of here. Generational curses are learned behavior. And I'm going to tell you why curses get in families. It's not just learned behavior practices of our past. You know what happens? Strife gets in our family and we become accustomed to our parents yelling. We're accustomed to, to beat kids instead of thanking them with love. We're accustomed of struggling. We're accustomed to everything that God says you're not. And so what happens is my daughter yelling and screaming and hollering. My son see me coming and with change comes always there. I'm going to say that again. With 